will be introducing Callie and she will be introducing Candy. Callie Kelly Wood is the president and founder of Utah Kids Club and uh, she has four children. She had four children in five years and she managed to grow Utah Kids Club to over 45,000 families. Um, she did that by networking with schools, clubs, bloggers, and businesses. Callie seems to know everyone, everywhere she goes. <laughs> Kelly loves life, uh, people, family, and playing, and playing. Her four-year-old daughter knows and will tell you that, mm, that her mom's favorite job is being her mom. Um, please join me in welcoming Candy. Okay. We're on here. Yeah. Okay. You guys can all hear me pretty well? Excellent. We're glad you're here. Um, have any of you heard of Utah Kids Club? Raise your hands. You in the back with the beanie. What's your name? Tanner. Tanner, what is Utah Kids Club? You rose your hand and you don't know? Okay. Anybody know what it is? It's okay because you're all a little bit older than our general population that we market to. Um, so Utah Kids Club, I started it uh, almost eight years ago, um, and I, this is how it all started. I went to three different colleges. I just love going to school, so I thought I'd try them all. Um, went to a school in North Dakota to play softball. I actually did a year here. Um, it was actually UVSC when I was going to school, and then I transferred up to the U and just had a blast going to school. I was... Um, an SBO in high school, a student body officer. And my funnest year ever, we planned parties just about every other week because our, our um, president, the teacher that was in charge of us, couldn't handle any more than that. So we did the homecoming, the prom. We um, started Spirit Week that I hope is still going and did a bunch of things for Easter and Halloween. So I, I really like playing. And I didn't know that it would one day bring me money, which is even better if you're playing and making money at the same time, right? Hands? Okay, Shaney, you're gonna get a pass to go play two games of laser tag at Boondocks. We'll see if the rest of you decide to participate today. So, um, I, have three, I have four babies. When I had my first, little Davis here, and he's the big guy on the floor there, the biggest in the diaper, um, he was about six months old, and I thought I was living the dream. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I was so bored. Like, our house, what do you do in the house with a six-month-old? So I'd call friends and say, hey, let's go to the zoo. Let's do something, because I didn't want to just go with Davis. He wasn't talking. He was, you know, he was just a little squishy guy. So um, a lot of my friends that had three, four, five kids that I thought it'd be fun to go to the zoo or boondocks or whatever, what's one of your favorite places? Hand. You guys don't have any favorite places? You in the front. Nickel City. Nickel City, the arcade. For you, we will give you a pass to Tracy Aviary. Have you been there? Bird shows, birthday parties. They do a big green week every spring. It's free on the green day. Um, so anyways, a lot of my friends, they didn't really want to go with just Davis and I because they had four or five kids. And to get into any fun center, eight bucks a kid, they were looking at a $50 day. And so for a Tuesday and a Wednesday, that was kind of a lot of money on their budgets. Um, so I thought, well, this kind of stinks. Here I am changing diapers. At one time, this picture you see here, we had four in diapers. Every, every kid poops. Um, MPs. So I'm looking five to six diapers a kid. Candy and I, my mom went to St. George one day and we changed 21 diapers in a day. One day. On vacation. If you want to be a mom, you do not go on vacation. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm in the house with my six month old. We're bored. Life in a box isn't fun. And that's what it felt like because nobody wanted to play. And there I was. Three years of three different colleges doing all these fun things all the time. Now I was in my house. It was kind of sad. So the money struggles keep people home. They keep their families home, which also meant that all the fun centers were struggling as well, because if the families weren't there, who was, right? Nobody. So I told my husband one night, we were laying in bed, and I said, I'm going to start a kids club. And he was like, 
cool, go to sleep. So the next morning, I called um, the planetarium because I'm thinking, if I can get a couple strong names in the community to follow and believe in this idea that I hadn't even really put together yet, then everybody else will follow. So I'm just going to hit it hard, and I'm going to call the planetarium and the aquarium first because those seem to be like the cool places when the families go. And if they say no, then, then I, you know, at least I did it. So I called the planetarium, and I remember her name was Danny. I had no idea what I was going to say. So Danny got on the phone. She was the marketing person. I said, Danny, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I've got all these friends with lots of kids, and we want to come to the planetarium, but $7 a kid is quite a bit of money. Would you be able to work with us so that we could come? And she said, yeah, why don't you guys do like our group discounts? Because if 20 people come on the same day, then it's 2 or $3 off. That wasn't what I wanted. So I said, well, some of my friends like, can only go on Tuesday, and some have karate on Tuesday, and some can only go on Thursday because they got ballet, you know, all these different schedules. And so I'm talking to Danny, and I said, what if I gave them a note that they were in my group, but they were just going to come a different day because of their schedules? And she's, so she's brainstorming with me, and we came up with this idea. And then I took it from the little note, and we got a membership card, and we started getting all these different fun centers. I, after the planetarium, I called the aquarium. They jumped right on it. We got Fat Cats and Hollywood Connection and Boondocks and all these fun people. And I was like, this is awesome. We're going to play every day. So um, I actually was even getting calls back from places I didn't know about. The Natural History Museum of Utah, they now have a big location by the U. Do you guys know that one? Um, and so she called me back, her name is Janet Frazier, and she said, I was at a, a museum, like every year the state puts on a museum conference, so all the museum people come together, and she said, somebody was talking about your club. And I was like, really? And she said, I wanna do pay for an adult and three kids for free. And I was like, oh, I'm there tomorrow. So things were going really, really well. And so what we did was just started putting it all together. So all the families are going to pay me lots of money, and they're going to get this membership card, but it's going to save them lots of money, and they're going to have more fun, and they're going to get out of their little box house. Um, so we got all these fun things. Then I started putting a calendar together, because if you went to Boondocks on Tuesdays, it was $2 off. And if you went to Hollywood Connection on Saturday at 11 and 1, there's free magic show. And my moms need to know these things, and the fun centers need a way to share their calendars besides having a post-it in their fun center. So um, we put the calendar together and then I started sending out a weekly email to my group of moms of like 10, because I wasn't worried about the moms on that point yet. So, so that's basically what the kids club is. Pretty simple idea, right? Have you guys, have you guys ever seen like a student savings card? I see that even the career passport you guys get your card, you're getting discounts different places. So simple, simple idea, right? So I, I, not like I was a genius. There's the Kids Club card. So next, after I had all these fun centers, we had about 200, and I was really going places. We had Cowabunga Bay, Seven Peaks at the time. Um, well, Seven Peaks down here and Raging Waters was giving us 40% off up in Salt Lake, now Seven Peaks. Liberty Land was a part, Laser Assault, lots of fun places, lots of things to do. So then I was like, well, we better get some cards out or else if the fun centers don't get people back in, they're not gonna wanna keep giving me all these great discounts. So somebody anonymously sent an email to Good Things Utah. Have you guys heard of that TV show? You have? Who's heard of it? Okay, well, you need to get out of the house more. Because here's a buy one, get one free to Noodles and Company. So you could take a husband on a date. Um, it's, I like Good Things Utah. I like the ladies that do it. This is being recorded. It's a great program. It's really for stay-at-home moms that are bored. So those were the moms I wanted to get out and have fun. So somebody, I don't know who, sent an email to Good Things Utah and told them about this really cool, awesome program called Utah Kids Club. And if they would have it on their TV show first before anybody else heard about it, they'd be amazing. The moms would love them. They'd be like in the know. And so Good Things Utah called me. And I remember I was at my mom's house. 
my little Davis, who was about seven months old now, um, he, he was a baby in a helmet. Have you seen those helmet kids? That's Davis. He was sleeping on a, a taking a nap on grandma's bed and the phone rang and I was like, it's good things Utah. And so I'm talking to, talking to him on the phone and they want me to come down and do a presentation and the baby falls off the bed, conks his head on the dresser going down. I couldn't get off the phone. This was my chance. So I didn't. Little Davis was crying. Grandma took care of it. We booked Good Things Utah. We got on the TV show, sat down at the table with four ladies, told everybody how fun this was and all the fun places. 3,000 moms signed up for Kids Club within minutes of being on the TV show. Now, I'm not pushing Good Things Utah. The idea is I'm pushing that I pushed myself. It wasn't an anonymous email. I sent it because I believed that I had something really cool and if everybody else just would have a chance to hear about it, then it could grow. So sometimes you have these ideas in life, you know, and my husband just said, yeah, go back to sleep, right? And if I just went back to sleep and let it go, it would have gone. And if I would have never called the planetarium and brainstormed with her on the phone and all the questions she asked me, which I didn't tell you, like, was a nonprofit, and she asked me so many questions. If I didn't write them down and actually think it through it and come back with the answers, it would have died right there. And it could have died again if I would have never anonymously sent an email. Sometimes you just got to push things, even if, you know, even if they say no, then you email Big Buddha at Fox 13. And it takes him eight years to respond. We did 13 TV shows segments with him last Friday, but it did take me eight years to get him to respond. So you got it. You just got to go for it sometimes because people are always going to tell you, that's a great idea. You're a great artist, but who's going to pay you for it? You know, you're, you could be a model, you could be an engineer, but that's a lot of school, you know? And so if you just buy into these other people's ideas, you just might as well go back to sleep. Um, I have an aunt, and I love her guts, I really do. Um, and she has grown kids now, and she's always telling me how lucky I am that I actually get to work from home with my kids. There is nothing harder than working from home with your kids. There are four little guys. Not one can even fill up a sippy cup with milk. So every three minutes, somebody else is in the office. We put up a gate. It's this big. It's a nice round arch with the sunbeams coming out. But it's a gate, and it locks, and I've got a padlock. But I still, you know, when the kids are crying and you've got 21 diapers to change, it is really hard to get any work done. Nothing, nothing to do with luck. I'm very blessed that I get to stay home with my kids. I'll, I will say that, but luck has nothing to do with it. So you've just got to go for it. Sometimes it will be hard, but you can make things happen. Um, so, so grandma, who's been watching this grow and grow, um, I said, you know, this is really taking off and I think we should do something. So let's go ahead and pay an attorney to set it up correctly. We're going to be a nonprofit. We want to make sure we've got all of our paperwork in line. We don't want any problems with taxes because we're going to start getting some big money coming in. And so we went ahead and made an appointment with an attorney. It was like $2,500 that he wanted for, to set up the kids club and then he wanted to set up a marketing business so we could take money on this side and that was another $2,500. And so he's telling us everything. And the only thing I really, really remember as he's like, so now what is it? And I said, well, this is our, our membership card. I had a couple printed up by then. And I showed him and he said, these things never make it. And I just took that as the biggest challenge. I was gonna show that big attorney, big fat attorney, that I was gonna make it. And he's like, a couple months, it's just gonna dissolve. Nobody's gonna get behind you. You know, and I can set it up, but is it really going to go anywhere? And I was like, oh, yeah, it is. Um, then I have a brother that's very business oriented and does big, fancy deals with lots of sorts of people. And he was like, $12 a month for a family? That's just not even enough money to cover your website fees. But I thought, this is for families. I want to keep it low. I want families to get out and have fun. This is what life is about, is playing, right? You don't go to school so you can go to school the rest of your life. You go to school so you can make money so you can play and be in the kids club. So 
Um, right? Who said right? You're the one that needs free donuts. Right? That's okay. You can have free donuts. But you have to go to This is the Place Heritage Park to earn your free donuts. You're welcome. So yeah, that big attorney, he told me it wasn't going to go anywhere. Nobody's going to back you up. You know, it's a great idea, but these things just flop. Um, so my idea when it started was all these families are going to pay me $12 a month. If I get 1,000 families, that's $12,000 a month. We could live on that. So um, then my second thought was businesses will pay me to advertise. So I've got the mom's money coming in. I've got some business money coming in. I'm just connecting the two. And then I told my grandma, mom, I said, what if we like to get the name out more? Let's do parties like every three or six months. So the moms that are in the club will tell their friends that are not in the club to come to my party. And then they'll hear about Kids Club and we'll make more money. But they're going to be free. We're just going to do these parties. They're going to take a lot of work because eventually it's going to grow our club and it's going to pay us back. So that's how my idea started. That's what I really thought was going to happen. Newsflash, who's, who likes my... Nobody likes it? I like Iron Man. Oh, I have a crush on him too. Oh, but you already got a prize. Yes, I did. Okay, you get to go play, do two free games of laser tag at Boondocks. Um, so Batman calls me up and he's like, Callie, this, this isn't really happening the way you thought it would happen. Um, we actually have 45,000 moms that do not pay me every week. They get the weekly email. They love, they're free. They love my free emails and they love the free puppet shows and they love the free magic shows and they never pay me and they're happy. Um, the, the membership card, where all my money is coming from, it's very seasonal. June, July, August, man, we make a ton of money. September is depressing. Every day when I get on, people are saying, back to school, we're not going out to the fun centers as much. So I send those to my customer support and I have her take care of them. Um, and businesses pay us to advertise, which I wasn't sure they would. They were going to do it for free so that I could get all these moms to pay me. So it kind of has flipped on me. And the biggest flip of all, of all my ideas was the parties that we were going to do for free so that the moms would bring other moms. To I totally messed up on that, got it 100% backwards. The businesses, the businesses that actually attend our parties to meet more moms and to market themselves will not come if I do not charge a ticket price. We have a martial arts guy that he does karate lessons and whatever. He said if he goes to a free event, those moms never sign up and pay him for karate. So he will not come if I do a free party. So we started charging ticket money and we make a ton of money on our parties that was going to be no money and a lot of work. And now it's actually a lot of fun, not really a lot of work, and a lot of money. So you've got to be fl flexible. You might have ideas. Who wants to be something when they grow up? What do you want to be? Well, so far, going to Robin's banking, but um, that's one thing. I did have a dream about going to the Olympics and speed skating, but I got married, so it kind of changed. Your wife totally crushed your hopes and dreams. She's a good wife. Uh, why don't you take her to miniature golf on us? Okay, speed skater, but banking. So you want to be a banker. You got to, you know, may, you're not sure where you want to go with that. Maybe you're going to go into mortgages. Maybe you should start setting up student accounts as they grow. You got to work with these ideas because what you want right now, maybe it flips and you actually become a realtor and you're working with mortgage people or you're a title company. You got to be flexible with your dream, even if it doesn't work out the exact way you planned it. Maybe you're the manager of a bank. Um, so, right, flexibility. Um, the biggest, another huge thing that's made our club s successful and last when this attorney told me that two, three months, nobody else is going to get behind you. It's just going to die. We have relationships with the, the people that we work with. All these fun passes I'm giving out to you, it takes me a phone call. It takes me one email. Noodles and Company sends me 5,000 
of those buy one get one frees like every three to four months. Boondocks, her name is Kathy. I just call her up, Kathy, I need some more laser tags. What have you got? I have an event coming up. You want me to hand something out? I know them by name. Janet Frazier's been at the Utah Museum. She, she, she changed jobs two years ago, broke my heart. Um, but we're, we actually work with the businesses. We put an ad for them on our website and we follow up. Is it working? Do we need to change it? How can we help you? We want the moms to get into the fun centers. Because if, if the fun center tells me, you know what, the, ad, the ads on your club just don't pull anything, it tells me the moms don't like the ad, right? So who am I even helping? Nobody. So I have to keep in touch with them. We put their events on our calendar. Provo Beach Resort did a big thing for New Year's Eve. They sent me their schedule. They had an animal show at one o'clock. They had all these things going on and they want people to know. And so they call me and say, Callie, can you do this for me? Yeah, I'll do it for you. And my son's birthday is in March. So we're gonna need to have a birthday party. Okay, you got it. So there's lots of different perks coming back. Um, and then, like I said, that animal show on New Year's Eve, they get highlighted in my weekly email. So the calendar of events has got everything going on. But the email, I just pick and choose my top, 10, 15, 40 for Halloween. Um, so the discounts have to work. We want the businesses to work. We want to know them by name. Hollywood Connection shut down, terrible thing. Jim was there for like 13 years. He invited me out to a big conference in um, Mesquite with him a few years ago to go market and meet other families. It's, it's the relationships that really propel and help your business. And no matter what you do, Mr. Banker, you're gonna to need to follow up with your clients. Are you making your car payment? How's your mortgage? Do you need to do a 401k? You've gotta have the relationships to build a business in anything you do. So being a people person is a good thing. We had a doctor that was terrible, absolutely terrible. And I will say his name on live TV because everybody knows it, Dr. Morales. My little guy that was in a helmet, Davis, he wore a helmet for six months. Every single night we had to bathe him off because it would just make him hot and sweaty and he was getting eczema really bad over his face. So the first helmet doctor tells me, Davis's head looks really round and let's go ahead and take it off. He's done, hooray, you finished it. Well, like a week later, I'm just thinking, you know, it doesn't really look round to me. It looks flat and squashed out. And so we got a second opinion I'm sitting in the doctor's office after waiting over an hour late for my appointment. The doctor was an hour late. Davis is sitting up on the little kid's table and the doctor walks right in and said, why is your kid not in a helmet? About broke my heart. Try being a mom for six months working with your kid every single night. The doctor walks right in and tells you, like, you're crazy. Why is your kid not wearing a helmet? Have you not done anything for your baby? And I just looked at him and I said, I'm here for a second opinion. Okay, smart doctor, best doctor. He does incredible work on children. Absolutely no people skills. You've got to learn no matter what kind of business you're in, no matter what career you do, you've got to work with people. They have feelings, they're live, they're intelligent. And you've got to just be able to, to network with people, meet them, touch them. And then your businesses will grow or whatever career you do. Um, so good for us, good for them. Like I was telling you, all the fun things we do for the businesses that work with us. Um, we have over 23,000 on our Facebook now. I throw a couple dollars at it for boondocks. They'll have over 50,000 people see their ad on our Facebook page. It's really not hard. Um, another thing down here, truth in advertising. Um, we take it a different meaning than some places. Um, one of our friends, Scales and Tails Reptiles, they do animal shows, snakes, turtles, scorpions. They brought a six and a half foot alligator out to our party last week. You guys all wanna be in Kids Club, huh? Who wants to be in Kids Club? Okay. Let's see. You in the back get a pizza. Voted best pizza in the valley from Pier 1. Any size, any personal size pizza. Um, so Scales and Tails, she, they put a ton of money into commercials on TV and they do all sorts of different events and, pe and people start calling me and saying, Callie, you know, we're spending 500 bucks a month on these little value pages magazines. It's a whole magazine and they get like a business size ad for 500 bucks. And we tell them, 
you know, we've been there, we've done that, you don't need to keep doing that, it's, you know. So we, we help them advertise. Um, and as well with that, I email truthful facts to my moms. I tell them which events to go to, which ones not to go to, which ones to take your babies, which ones to get a babysitter. So I'm building those relationships with the moms that they really see me as a friend helping them. And that's what I want to be. I, ob I obviously don't know 45,000 moms in our club. Um, but we're very truthful in what we say. And so when we say something, people believe it because it's not blown up a lot. Um, networking. We talk to everybody. Big brothers, big sisters. Do you guys know the program? You in the pink shirt, you've got to raise your hand or I can't get you a surprise. <laughs> um, we give them free memberships to Utah Kids Club because they have their littles, the little guys in elementary and the bigs, they bigs and littles, and we give them free membership cards so that they could take their littles to bowling and laser tag and all these different places. Um, Boys and Girls Club's the same. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, we love the Boy Scouts. They come to all of our parties, help manage the rock wall, the ropes course, and we pay them, which helps them go to adventure camp and these different things in the summer. Lots of networking going on. Bloggers, small and large, bloggers from 100 moms to 20,000 moms on Facebook. We give them free tickets to our parties. We give them free, free anything we got, and they'll put an ad up for Kids Club for us. So it just making them happy makes us happy. You see, um, PTA, uh, what else was I just going to say? Anyways, lots of, lots of networking everywhere we go. Sherry, hard word, Sherry, raise your hand. She was our DJ years ago. She's grown up. She went to college, got her master's. Here she is, her dream. Um, so, so my little kids club, what was happening at home at the time that my idea was taking off was not a good thing. My husband had been employed as, he's an engineer, very technical, very, very geeky. Sometimes I sit down and I'm like, just get me out of the conversation. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, he got laid off after 12 years of being with the company. I'm on my second baby and he came home one day and he said, you'll never guess what happened. And he said, you won the, the lottery, you won a million bucks? And he's like, no, I just got laid off. Not expected at all. Um, so things weren't going very well, and now my little kids club of only a hundred, couple hundred moms really needed to pull in and put some muscle behind it. So I was sitting at a baby expo, trying to meet the moms, get my name out, and this, this man in a suit walks over with his nice little tie, and he's asking me all these questions, and I really just wanted him to go away, but I'm thinking, no, oh, maybe, maybe something will come out of this, right? So he walks over and he's asking me all these questions. And he said, you have three, I had 3,000 moms on my email at this time. He said, you email 3,000 moms every week? I said, yeah, and they read it too. Um, and he thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And he's like, well, yeah, why? Why do you, well, who are you? Why do you care? And so he told me he's a doctor and um, he studies the flu shot. So what they do is they take your child's blood before the flu shot give them the flu shot, and three or four months later take their blood again to compare before and after blood samples to make the flu shot better, see what they can, the flu changes every season, the, the strand. I'm not the doctor, I'm the kids club person. Um, so so he, he started talking to me and I kind of was opening my mind more than just, you know, go away, I might miss a mom or two if you're talking to me. And so I was listening to him and I started realizing we could actually work together. So I told him for $1,000, I was thinking really big, I would send out an email for him about his studies. He spent fourteen, sixteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on the radio telling families about his study, but it sounds like a lab study. You don't want to put your babies into the study. Well, the moms I had been emailing now for a couple of years were my friends. So I took my, my little guys, I had Davis and Dax, two now, up to his, his lab, to his clinic, and we did the flu shots with him. And it was wonderful. They got, the boys didn't like their blood draw, but they didn't even cry. The nurses were really fast, just whoop, whoop, got their blood. Um, and we actually got paid for it. They pay you time and compensation, travel compensation. 
So we actually got paid for being there. The kids got their flu shots. They, during the time of that three to four months, if my kids got sick, I needed to take them back to him so he could examine them and see what was going on, which meant I didn't have any doctor's bills, no co-pays. My kids had good uh, somewhere that they could go that the people cared about him. So I sent this email out to my mom's that was one email, $1,000. He filled his spots for the whole winter that would have cost him fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on the radio. This was my big break. So ever since, we just keep going back. We do flu shots. Um, I have a, a stepson that went out and got his wisdom teeth out. Um, Grandma Candy did the senior flu shot. It's been a great network for us. But going back to the beginning, you have to keep your mind open. You know, sometimes I, sometimes opportunities will come. But if you just look at the customer the wrong way, he was a man in a suit and a tie at a baby show. I was there to meet the moms. I never knew that within six months I'd get a $10,000 check for sitting at a table trying to meet moms. You've got to just let life happen, and when it does, grab it, because it will go find somebody else. Um, and so with that, what happened is now my doctor gives me the money that I can use to grow my parties, the ones that weren't really gonna pay me money but actually end up giving me the most money for my business. Um, we rent Southtown Expo Center. Who's heard of it? Oh, she did it, she moved her arm. What if she should probably do miniature golf at Boondocks? Good job, good job. And you need a prize too, okay. So with this, you can see this is Southtown Expo in our picture. Does it look like we're having fun? Every single one of those heads paid us money to get in. We have bounce houses, rock walls, all sorts of fun things. And at this point in the business, like things were just growing so big. So Grandma Candy, who has been with us since the beginning, jumped right in. You want to come up here and take it away? She has more prizes. So I'm going to let her take it and tell you about what we call a palooza. Do you know what a palooza is? P -p palooza. No. Nobody gets a prize on that one. You can, you can do oh, It's on. It's off. Is it on? Um, so hold it really, oh, cl really close. So what we do is we do winter palooza. And the funnest thing about it is the families that we get to work with. We get to get sponsors that work with us that want to create a business and an atmosphere for their family to come play. So we work with a lot of these companies nationwide, T-Mobile, Farmers, Big Dog Dish, Arches Insurance. Jungle Jumperoo, has anybody heard of Jungle Jumperoo? They're right down here in Provo Orem. It's a big inner tube and it's got these pipes that go through and kids just hold on to it and jump and jump and jump. So we work with them one-on-one -on -one as a sponsorship. And that's kind of where I come in. I do a lot of the marketing and advertising with these companies so that it makes it fun for them to want to be part of us. Um, when we first started the Kids Club, when Callie first got it going, we actually went nationwide and started doing a bunch of um, marketing and trying to get like Fisher products, different things that go um, with the club. And so we actually went to two ABC um, kids expos. I don't know if you know what they are. It's all for wholesale people purchasing and there was a million square foot feet of baby expo that we walked through for like three or four days. And so we work with different companies to sponsor and like Callie said, everything we do is a win-win. Jungle Jumperoo is going to the National Toy Show in New York the 14th to the 17th of this month and have, has invited us to go. So we get an opportunity to market with vendors across the nation to bring new things into the club so that it makes it a lot more fun. So the first one we did, we went, we flew to Denver. And then after we went to Kentucky, um, we kind of have laid it off until someone has come to us. And so now we're headed to the New York to Toy Show to create a whole bunch of stuff for the kids club. We got so big that we thought it would be really, really fun to market this across the nation. And then we had people start calling us from Florida, from Maine, from 
Pennsylvania all over and wanted to do the kids club. And this has been the funniest thing for Callie and I. It wasn't funny at first. We had 52 flops. And when I say 52 flops, we actually marketed the kids club to 52 different cities across the United States. People found out what we were doing and big businessmen came in. We met with them twice. Um, a group of, I believe, 26 or 32 to start with, and they all wanted to purchase associations across the United States. Well, as it happens, all these people are huge business people, but they have no marketing skills or the desire or um, the potential to really want to do it. They wanted to pay people to do it. And so there was um, one gentleman that I worked with personally in Canada, he purchased three territories and then two more territories, and those cities flopped. He didn't do one thing with it waiting for someone else um, to come in and do it. They have no gumption. They have no passion. They have no um, desire. But boy, do they have a lot of money to want to do it. And so we kind of just um, have taken the business and we've taken the creativity and tried to make it the best we can. When we go to New York to go to the toys show, we will actually work with companies that want to bring more to Utah, that want to bring more fun, creative things that we can play and our families can have the best that there possibly is. So the biggest thing that we really, really want is people that have a passion and a desire to want to play with their families. Um, I am going to let Callie come back up now and t take some questions from you, see what's going on. And if you have any ideas or creative things that we would really, really like to do, that's the best thing that we can do. And if you would, we are videotaping, so we'd love to get your comment or your question on camera. We have prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. My question is, why would the vendors not come to your parties unless you charge a fee? Good question. So the vendors, when we do our big paloozas, T-Mobile comes out and sponsors the rock wall. So while families are in line to climb the rock wall, T-Mobile gets to talk to mom and dad and tell them about the family plans and buying tablets and all these things. Well, what they were seeing was if people came to an event without paying to get in, that's exactly what they wanted to pay for nothing. And so a lot of those free events, they weren't collecting customers. And T-Mobile was standing there paying to be at the show, paying for the rock wall, paying staff to be there, working with a totally different caliber of customer. So now every year we kind of up our ticket just a little bit to bring in a little bit quali more, higher quality because we want our vendors to do well. We want T-Mobile to make a ton of sales. We want Dish to make a ton of sales. We want Sensi to make candle cells, and so that's what we were seeing. And like I said, the martial arts guy, super cool martial arts guy, um, he just flat out wouldn't do free events. There was no way he was going to spend his time on a Saturday sitting there handing out free candy bars and stickers and not recompensing anything. So good question. Totally caught me off guard because I thought free more people, the better it would be. But we saw the exact opposite. Good question. And do you want laser tag or what have we got? Noodles and Company. All right. Her name is Adrienne. She lives in California. Why She's don't my you tell them now. a little bit about how you also have expanded some of your, like your girls out, night out, and some of those things? We've got a, a few different parties. When Callie first started the, the kids club, we started doing girls' night out parties, and they were really fun. We did one at Wheeler Farm, we did one at Noah's, um, and these were just for the moms. We did total pamper parties, we did about 2,500 people. Callie really loves doing the kids event where the whole family comes. Winter Palooza was January 24th. Um, we had 100,000 square feet at Southtown Expo, and it is slammed with people, but it is the whole party. The girls' night out are really fun, but we can only tap into a couple thousand moms and get the creativity. We've really kind of gotten too big to do it where it's really effective for everybody. But they're so fun and we get so many people involved in it. But 
as we grow and we get bigger, we'll do more and more events. The challenge that we're having right now is we can't find a venue to hold as many people as we would like. The last event we did at Wheeler Farm, we got shut down by the city, fined by the city, I should say, because the parking, they, they charged us for four policemen. There was nowhere to park. in anywhere up and down the streets, it caused traffic jams. So venues are becoming a huge thing for us. Um, Thanksgiving Point is really good because it's halfway between Utah County and it's between Salt Lake County. And it's a really good venue. It's just whether you can get the timing and the weather conditions. There's a lot of factors that go into it. We really just like to play. So we just finished our Winter Palooza last Saturday, two Saturdays ago. And it'll take me about a week and a half till I'm bored again. And then we'll have to plan something else. So that's really, that's really what I think has made our business successful is we enjoy doing it. There's a lot more behind it than just making money. It's something that we look forward to. I love working with Batman and Cinderella and the alligators. Um, but any, any business that you do, if you're into it, then it can be lots of fun. My husband, the nerd engineer, I don't get what he does, but he loves it. He got on an airplane Monday morning and flew to Pennsylvania. He told me on Wednesday, right before Palooza, that he was flying to Missouri to go fix something. And I said, no, you can't go this week. Um, anything you do, if, it, if you're the geek side and you need to be here setting up all the media and the, or if you want to be a banker, whatever you want to do, if you'll just follow your heart, don't let anybody tell you that it can't happen, and you just do it and you like doing it, then it will pay you. You just got to go for it. All right. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Uh, my name's Shaney Price. I'm the participant recruiter for the Career Passport Program. Um, we just wanted to thank Kenny and Kelly for coming out and sharing their expertise with us. What an awesome presentation. It was great to learn about the Utah Kids Club. And we'd like to present you guys, actually, with these little tokens of our appreciation. And please join me with another round of applause for these two prizes for us.